As y'all see, I come to fight. I've been my fighting attire. <laughs> and the message that I want to bring forth today is I want to title this Slaying Giants. And if you would, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. You know, it's something, I was talking to Brother Rutger last night, and he brought forth the word this morning. And I was sharing with, we were talking about the words that we was going to share, you know. And so he, when I was telling him what I had, the Lord made upon my heart, he said, Brother, you know, that's a similar word that the Lord gave me when, they, when, when he spoke on the revival. And I thought to myself, you know, that's the Lord, because I, I, I wasn't there. I had to work that day. So I didn't know what he spoke on. And that told me that the Lord, that this is a word that the Lord deems important and that he says, you know, usually when you say something twice, usually you mean it. If you're talking to your kids and you tell them, look, do this. And then when they don't do it, you tell them, look, I'm telling you for the last time, do it. Usually you know and they know that they better do it because you're serious about this. So when the Lord gives a similar word like this, I think, I think like the Bible says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God has to say. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah to God. So if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. And I know everybody in here got a Bible, right? Yes. I know the pastor makes it easy for us. You know, most times he has the scriptures in the bulletin and all, but you should still always have your Bible. You never know when you're going to have to speak to somebody outside. You never know when the Lord is going to speak a word to your heart individually that you might have to open up your word and begin to study on your own. Always bring your Bible to church. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. And it reads, Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall I provide for an inheritance the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. He says, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Then he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now let me tell you a little bit about this man, Joshua. Joshua was a man who was being groomed for great things. Joshua, he was with the children of Israel. He was with Moses, who was grooming him, as, as by the way. He was with them when God led them through their Red Sea experience. You all know the Egyptians was chasing the children of Israel, and God parted the Red Sea, and they walked through it. And then he saw the miracle that after they got through, how the Egyptians were drowned, the miracle, okay? Joshua was there when God was feeding them through the desert. When they didn't have anything, and he was feeding them manna, and he was uh, miraculously providing water for them. Joshua also was with Moses when Moses was on Mount Sinai getting the Ten Commandments. He was standing, you know, ways off, but he saw all the things that was going on. Joshua was part of the 12 spies that God had commanded Moses to send forth the spy on the Canaanites. Now, God, you know, God already knew their strength, but God was just testing their faith. And so, you know, the children, the 12 spies, they, they went out in the land and they saw the Canaanites who looked like giants. And so they came back and 10 of them gave a report that said, oh, that the, the Canaanites, we can't beat them. We can't defeat them. We might as well just give up. And Joshua and Caleb, they were, only, they were the only two that stood on the word of God and said, yes, they're big, they're strong, they're all that, but we can take them because God is on our side. And the Bible tells us that, uh, that the ten, the ten, the ten of the spies, because of their lack of faith, they died in the wilderness. They never got to see the promised land. It was only Joshua and Caleb, it was only them two that stood upon the word of God, that believed what God said. It was them two that got to receive, that, 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 that got to walk and see the promised land. So this was a man who was being groomed 
by Moses to take over the, the leadership of the children of God, the children of Israel. So now, Moses is now off the scene. Moses is now, he's gone. And Joshua has now the weight, as it were, of the world on his shoulders. And so God tells him, God puts upon his heart, okay, this is what I want you to do. I am now ready to lead y'all into the promised land, into the land of milk and honey. But there are enemies, there are giants in the land. He says, but I want you to go forth and conquer. Now, one thing I want you to realize, a giant, in this case, is anything that keeps us from realizing the goal that God has placed before us. A giant is anything, I will say it again, that is placed before us that will keep us from doing or, or, from doing or obtaining that which God has put forth, forth for us. So there were giants in the land. And yet God says, if you will obey my word, if you will listen to me, he says, I will deliver. So I've got three points here that I want to make that I think that will benefit us as Christians. You know, when we face the giants that we face. Amen? Amen. 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 So in the sixth chapter, in the sixth, or sixth verse as it were, the Bible says, be strong and of a good courage. Now, this word courage means to stand up even when it might cost you something. It means to be fearless. It means to be bold. It means to go forth and conquer. Now, what do you think would happen? Now, we, now our, our man, he was in battle. He was in battle. What do you think would have happened if he would have walked out to that battle with a lack of courage? What would have happened if he would have had, I can't do this. I can't, you know, what have you. He would have been punked out, as they say. He would have been defeated before the battle even started. God told him to be courageous and be strong. That why? Because I am there. I am with you. I will uphold you. I will, I will sustain you. And see, God is telling us even that today. He's telling us to be courageous. He's telling us to be strong. You know, I think about giants. And I think about things, giants in our lives. I think about a movie, kids, that I had saw not too long ago. It was about a great basketball player. Some of y'all, some of y'all parents might know who I'm talking about. It was a man called Earl Manigault. Mm -hmm. In other words, or his name was the GOAT. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all might know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They say that this man was one, probably one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived. In fact, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said he was the best player he had ever seen on the playground. But this man faced a giant. The giant was what they call the white horse. It was what they call smack. Some of y'all, you know what I'm talking about? When I say that, y'all too young. I'm talking about heroin. This man faced up to a giant heroin. Somebody came to him and said, man, come on, let's have a good time. Let's party. And he knew that that was wrong. He knew that that wasn't the right thing to do. But see, there was a giant placed in front of him. He had, he had a lack of courage. He couldn't say no. So he took the, he took the heroin, heroin and he got hooked on it and it derailed his career. This man might have made thousands of dollars. Now, it's not right like now when they make billions of dollars, but we're talking back in the 60s and the 70s when they were making thousands of dollars. But he was derailed because a giant was placed in front of him. And I want to know, I would like to know, are you courageous today? If somebody was to ask you, well, look, here's a little joint. Here's a little this. You know, uh, let's go out here and have a little good time. Would you be courageous enough to say, no, that's not the right thing. That's not something that I should do because it's going to derail where I want to go in life. I remember when I was a kid growing up in high school, to study and to get good grades was a white thing. Mm. To be black, you know, we're going to have a party. We're going to have a good time. But if somebody was to come to you and tell you that, man, forget about all that. Let's go out and have a good time. Let's go out, you know, and have a little sex and all that. Things that you know is going to derail you from where you want to go. Are you courage courageous enough to say, no, I'm not going to do that? See, a giant is something that's placed in front of us. Are you going to slay the giant today? Or are you going to let the giant slay you? Are you going to be victorious? Or are you going to let the giant be victorious? You know, in this case, Earl Manigault, he was the one that was slain. We're in a battle today, saints. I wore my helmet. This helmet, I would put it on, but then I keep hearing an echo in this thing. So I take it off. But we are in a battle. 
I want to ask you adults. You know, I talk to the kids also. But I want to ask you, what about you when the giants are placed in front of you? When you know that somebody is making you angry and the Bible says that we ought to pray for those who despitefully use us, and you want to get and you want to curse somebody out, are you going to let the giant win or are you going to slew the giant? Are you going to stand up for God? You know, in our day and age, when you stand up for God, people want to laugh at you. People want to laugh at you. When you say, no, I'm going to go to Bible study. I want to learn more about God. Are you courageous enough to, 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 to withstand the ridicule? You know, I got saved at 18 years old. And I'm going to tell you, when you stand up for God, they're going to laugh at you. You look at a man that's got laughed at many times. You don't smoke. You don't drink. No, because I want to do what God tells me to do. I want to live my life as a, a living sacrifice to God. I want to be pleasing to God. Oh, that was funny then. But again, I want to ask you, are you going to slay the giant? Are you going to be courageous? Or are you going to let the giant slay you? The little drink that somebody wants to give you, that you go to somebody's house, are you going to be able to say no because that's not pleasing to my God? Or are you going to let the giant slay slay you. We're talking about courageous. We're talking about courage in the face of giants. <laughs> there are giants in the land, saints. We got to, he said, be strong and of a good courage. To be a saint, to be a child of God, are you going to be strong? Are you going to be courageous? But listen, he says something else. He says, be strong and of a good courage. But then he says in the eighth verse, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now this word meditate, it means to ponder. It means to think on. It means to mutter. You know, when you are in a battle, you know there's what they call psychological warfare. That's where the enemy is trying to get into your mind. That's where he's trying to tell you you can't do what, you, what it is that God is calling you to do. You know, when Joshua was out looking at the Canaanites, and I'm sure the first thing that came to his mind was, boy, you can't do this. But yet, he went back onto the word of God, and he said, Lord, I remember that your word says. And see, it's the same thing with us today. There is a battle that we fight in our minds. When you step out and you want to do something for God, the first thing that comes into your mind, you cannot do it. You cannot do it. And see, it's a battle of right and wrong thinking. I knew this girl one time, to give you an example. I knew this girl. She was a teenager. And she believed that the only thing that she had to offer was her body, the boys. Nothing, nothing brains or anything else. She figured that the only thing that she had to offer was her body. And so she was very promiscuous. First of all, that's wrong thinking. And so very promiscuous. She ran around. She was, she was doing all kinds of things. Well, you know, this, you know where this girl is at now? She's six feet under. Mm -hmm. And I know because this is my cousin I'm talking about. She died of AIDS. See, she had wrong thinking. She was a smart girl, but somewhere along the line, somebody got it into her mind that she was dumb, that she was stupid, that she couldn't do nothing. Right and wrong thinking. The Bible tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you can't, you see, when that thought comes in your mind that I can't do it, I can't do it, then you need to open up your word and begin to think on what God has said. Just like Joshua. God had given him a word, and God had told him to think on this word day and night. Because if you don't, doubts and fears are going to start entering it in. You start pushing out those doubts and fears through the word of God. Again, when we talk about being courageous, are you courageous enough to begin to study the word of God so that you can meditate on the word and you can get those negative thoughts? You know, somebody might tell you, you might have been told a long time ago that you were ugly. But the Bible tells me that you were made in the image of God. Yeah. Well, how can you be ugly if you are made in the image of God? See, we start thinking on things that are not with the word of God. It's contrary to the word of God. But also, this word meditate carries the meaning of 
it carries the meaning of mutter. It means to speak over. It means to speak life to. You know, when you start thinking again that you're ugly, no, I'm not ugly because I, I thank you, Lord. You begin, to, you begin to say these things over. You know, Lord, I thank you that I am made in the image of God. I give you praise, Lord God, because I'm made, I'm made in the image of God. Somebody said, you can't pass that test. Lord God, I thank you that I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Lord, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that I can do this, whatever it is that you're calling me to do. See, you begin to mutter. You begin to speak life over yourself. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking? If you're thinking of wrong things, the giant is going to get you. But again, we are giant slayers in this place. God has given us his word. Are you going to slay the giant? Are you going to let the giant win? Are you going to let those negative thoughts that you can't do nothing, that you're stupid, that the only thing that you have to offer is your body, that you got to walk, guys, that you got to walk around with your pants hanging down so that, you know, you can be cool and end thing? What to God if we would pull up our pants, put on clothes, and open up a book? I tell you, that's what's being cool. Meditating on the word of God day and night, you will have good success to body states. Sometimes I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. Amen. 